Okay, what do we have here? Um, what a subwoofer that's recently lined and received it. And this is the second time I actually got this and the last time when I received the parcel and just opened it and found out there was something wrong with it. So I sent it back and they sent me another one. Uh, and I'll tell you uh, what was the issue. Okay, I'll give you something this. This is a Boss Audio System, um, the Phantom D12F, uh, the 12 stands for uh, the size, it's 12 inch, and it's a subwoofer, and um, uh, it's a low profile one, um, 1000 watt uh, peak, 500 watt RMS, with a frequency response of 28 to 2 kilohertz and a very high sensitivity of 95 decibel which is very efficient impedance of 4 ohm and um, the, uh, the cone is uh, poly uh, mica and mica is a very good material both uh, insulative and very um, um, strong against uh, all sort of uh, um, forces like um, weather resistance and those uh, UV and you name it. Um, they usually use they used to use mica for insulation of uh, cables uh, and uh, in uh, making motors and stuff. Okay, let's open this up. What we have here just uh, protecting cardboard speaker. Some bad uh, speakers. People usually, when they unboxing things, they leave the best last. But I'm gonna just open it and show it to you guys. Okay, this is heavy. Okay, you can see it's very. I can feel it's very um, strong rubber around the on the edge. And so very low profile and uh, it has this um, plastic rubber shield around the magnet which will protect the magnet as well as a bit of shielding as well it is obviously made in China um, the, uh, the casing is um, cast aluminium that's why it, it is, it's heavy, but compared to other 12-inch subwoofers, it's light. Um, okay, let's see what else comes with it. Oh, okay, that's very important, the template. Uh, if you want to, oh, it's a bit dirty. Um, you want to mount it, so um, build your own uh, box. Um, you definitely need that and that's what I'm doing and uh, this is not only you can use it for uh, sealed boxes um, not ported okay template um, warranty mm. and then use a manual okay. manual and I want to go through a few details there and it will help you to uh, select your speaker or uh, when you constructing your own uh, enclosure these are important um, usually manufacturers uh, they have to give you these details um, for you to build your own enclosure so we have a free air resonance and that is um, 35 and then which is um, 35 Hertz and then you have total Q driver 
uh, resistance and what else you have um, electrical resistance um, of uh, FS and that non electrical resistance you need these values um, to come up with, with the right enclosure size uh, there are some online calculators that you can, you can use um, to get the right size or understand um, your speaker um, in terms of um, where you can use it. For example, your speaker might be only suited for the enc sealed enclosure or uh, it can be a mixture of both. And what else we have here? Um, you have the driver linear displacement so that's 0.197 of inch so that's how much the, your, your speaker um, is gonna um, jump up and down when it's uh, under pressure and obviously from that you can calculate the amount of air required inside the enclosure um, to get the optimum um, result. Um, the, the DC resistance, as you can see, the DC resistance is different to the, um, the speaker impedance, um, which is 4 ohm, but the DC resistance is 3.6 ohm. Um, and then the thermal power rating, again, in all the speakers, you get the, um, the peak value, which is here, the, this is the big number uh, you see in all the speakers, the 1000, 2000, 3000 watts or any uh, hi-fi system you buy. Don't rely on that because uh, the way manufacturer come up with the peak value, it's, uh, there is no standard. But from the other hand, the RMS value is something you can um, kind of benchmark uh, other speakers with it. Just zoom a bit. Okay, so in this case, what I bought, it's a 500 watt RMS um, power rating. And so how do you choose the right speaker for um, your amp? Always you have to um, get a smaller speaker uh, in terms of the rating of your amplifier. For example, if you have a 1000 watt amplifier, you don't buy a 1000 watt speaker because first of all, um, when when you ramp up the volume, um, you you will get some noise and distortion at the end. So you have to get a smaller speaker, for example, 800 watt. So your um, amplifier can easily drive that speaker without introducing any um, total harmonic distortion or THD. Um, okay, uh, and I will go through detail of THD in. Uh, amplifier videos and other important factor when you choose a um, amplifier is this sensitivity sorry the speaker's sensitivity the higher this value this uh, my case is 95 decibel and the higher the driver sensitivity it's the more efficient it is so and when it's a decibel that's the ratio that's um and um, so basically use less power from your amplifier um, to drive your speaker. What else we have here? Okay, this graph is very important. Um, um, so it, uh, they have a recommended enclosure and because this, um, because of these Um, specification of this speaker um, this speaker only suits for the sealed enclosure and you only see one graph um, that's frequency versus um, decibel the curve and why did I choose the sealed um, enclosure because um, the f frequency range or the response it's um, it's kind of a lot cleaner. It's it's good for like classical music or it's very um, it's more accurate. 
than a ported enclosure. Whereas in a ported, this is a sealed enclosure. You can see there is no hole or port in it. Whereas in a ported enclosure, you get that woof sound. You get the sound that you want for like movies and stuff. So you get more um, maybe volume but less accuracy. So I went. I wanted to select something that um, uh, gives me that range. And as you can see, it, it they recommend you the volume box, the box volume of the speaker. I mean, um, to get that maximum or the peak uh, out of that speaker. Now, if you have a look at this graph, you see it has a peaks here. So the way they designed it, if you put together a cubicle or sorry, an enclosure that is one cu cubic feet um, uh, with, with that area, you'll uh, most probably hit this area of the graph, so the peak. Um, but that's what ma using most manufacturers recommend. Um, again, you can tune your speaker and enclosure to whatever you want. You don't need to um, construct a um, recommended volume. Um, in my next video, I'm, I'm going to um, the detail of how I'm constructing my uh, enclosure and give you some tips on that and what other um, details we have here um, okay so uh, it says 12 inch black poly micro cone and this um, rubber uh, surround um, this this is very um, very weather resistance and UV resistance, very strong material. And that is this one. This is very important. In most speakers, that's the part that wears out, not this, not the cone. And what? Yeah, yeah that's it. And what else we have here? So, when you choose a speaker, um, make sure you're getting the frequency. Uh, response uh, or the frequency range right for example I mean for the subwoofer um, I don't I'm not gonna use it for 2 kilohertz or anything so I'm gonna use it for um, anything from 40 to um, 160 Hertz frequency range is important so you select your um, base let's say 80 Hertz and then you gotta select your um, Mid range and then tutors, and um, if you want to uh, produce all uh, frequencies with a uh, high level of uh, um, efficiency, and that is due to not all speakers, not all speakers can produce all the level, range of frequency, and there are only a few speakers that could, like, for example, um, produce. 28 Hertz in that case to 20 kilohertz um, and if there are speakers would do that the efficiency and the sound quality um, and if you look at that in this graph it's not um, very uh, flat response so for example in low frequency it might be low um, the output in terms of volume you may say and in higher frequency it might be high um yeah so that's about it and i bought this for um 90 uh 90 bucks australian dollar um back yep there's another paper it says do's and don'ts so you got you for installing your speakers everybody says when you want to secure the speaker in the box, always use your hand so um, you won't uh, damage the this uh, surround rubber, surrounding rubber material. And what other thing is very important, I will go through the more details when you um, fixing this um, to your enclosure. Make sure you. Um, 
stick some sort of um, gasket around this and the, so because that would um, first of all seal your box better and second reduce uh, um, some rattle and uh, other frequency noises and the the issue that I had with the previous one I just remembered was wasn't was a trivial thing but as you can see these fixing these holes interestingly on the previous one because first it's a, this is a frame and you got this material um, these two plates they didn't uh, align together so here you can see very nice round hole so in, in oh, that's a good example still it's not perfect so as you can see the the other plate it's covering a bit of a uh, hole of the casing so you have to pretty much use a drill to make it a perfect round so you can put a screw there but this one is a lot better than the, the other one and of course made in China and it has a very good um, terminal connections